Hi, and welcome to Selling in a Skirt with Judy Hoberman. I'm Judy. If this is your first time here, welcome. And if you've been here before, welcome back. We are so excited to have you here. So Selling in a Skirt is all about connection, community, and creating relationships. It's all about empowering, empowering professional women and encouraging men to champion women as well. What I love most about doing this show is I get to meet the most exciting men and women and today is no exception. Today we have two incredible women. And I wanna say that they are powerful, amazing, humble, and impactful. And I'll include myself in that. So there's three of us today. So let's talk a little bit about who they are. We're gonna bring them in and then we're gonna let them tell you really who they are. So first, in the middle, we have Betsy Santiago. Betsy is a strategist, a volunteer, and a communicator that loves to drive change and empower others. She served as a liaison and board member on almost 40 local professional groups and nonprofits, mm -hmm. including serving as president of the First Coast Hispanic Chamber of Commerce in 2010. On the other side, we have Maureen Edwards, and she's an award-winning branding, marketing, and business strategist, as well as a two-time award-winning inventor. She's built six profitable companies from conception to commercialization and has worked with hundreds of entrepreneurs to start, turn around, or scale their businesses. So welcome, ladies. I am so excited to have you, and I am thrilled that we're going to have some fun today. So first, why don't you tell everybody who you are, what you do, and what you love about what you do. So let's start with you, Betsy. Oh, okay. Well, thank you, first of all, for having us here on your podcast. It's actually an honor to be sitting between the two of you. Um, so my role here in Jacksonville is really to work with employers and helping them to transition into continuing education. Um, all of that just says, I love working with people. I'm used to being out in the community. And my favorite part is to when we are able to put the puzzle together and be able to unite an employer's need for upskilling or new staff with education and funding as well. So when we are able to put everything together into one neat, neat little package, that's success because now we've got employed people working in the fields that they love and getting paid the money that they should that they deserve and you tie that up in a nice beautiful bow nice little bow <laughs> that's right okay so welcome to you and maureen why don't you tell us about who you are what you do and what you love about what you do oh well thanks judy and thanks for having me and especially being in such great company of both of you so highly accomplished i'm really pleased to be among this great group here. Um, so I'm Maureen Edwards. Um, I actually am the founder of Eight Simple Steps, which is my sixth company. So as you can see, I embrace entrepreneurship and my mission in life is to empower other entrepreneurs to embody and embrace it. And uh, what I've discovered is that a lot of people, things don't go very well when they first start a company. Uh, it's not like having a corporate job. It's just very, very different. And it hits people pretty hard. Like, hmm, why isn't this going very well? Well, my mission is to make sure that we get you on the right path. The moment that you have the idea that you're ready to start, or if you're in the throes of it right now and things aren't going well, I've been there, I've done it. And I really want you to embrace the journey of entrepreneurship. So I work side by side with small business owners to make sure that they can build a sustainable business right from the start. And that's the important part, that word sustainable. But it's interesting that yeah. the three of us talked about empower. So I think that just it's more divine than anything else. So a topic on everyone's mind today is chat GPT or AI or any of the different ways that we use AI and how it impacts on women and higher education and leadership development and entrepreneurship. So my first question for both of you is, have you used any form of AI, whether it's ChatGPT or anything else? And what's been your experience? So let's start with you, Maureen. We'll go this way first. Uh, absolutely, I have. Uh, I would not be somebody who's been in marketing for almost 30 years unless I checked out something that a lot of people are fearful that will replace their job and you know marketing and copywriting those are kind of the the things right at the top so i have to do my due diligence and get into the nitty-gritty and and really see it uh 
And so, yes, I think there are some amazing positives that are going to come out of chat, especially in entrepreneurship. And we can talk about that as we move forward. But what I discovered is that with everything, there are pros and then there are also cons. And so for me right now, I think it's great at collecting information. It maybe will spark a great idea for you, elaborate on something that just is kind of on the tip of your tongue, but you can't quite get it, but it's not human. It doesn't have the creativity that brains have. It doesn't have the, the authentic human touch that can just never be replaced by real people, even coming together like this right now. So I say capitalize on the pros that we're gonna see out there but just know that your unique story and who you are cannot be replicated by a robot. Hmm. Interesting. I love that little spin you put on it. How about you, Betsy? Yeah. So for me, it's interesting because I was talking to a couple of the professors here at the college about this topic and wanted to kind of get their input on it. And there is a definite impact on education. We've already started seeing students turning in entire papers written by chat GPT, right? And so there's that need to kind of monitor and maybe set some guidelines as to what's acceptable, what what we, what we can you turn in, uh, plagiarism, are you cheating on tests by using this? There's a lot of different um, ways that it could be used in, a, in the wrong way. However, there are also, from my experience in using it, there's a lot of ways where it could be really helpful. I mean, I know we, at home we're, we're constantly asking Google or ask Alexa, and that's kind of a form of, of mm -hmm. the same AI type of uh, environment that we're living in. And it's quick to give you answers. So there, uh, like Maureen was saying, I think there's the pros and the cons, right? Because you're able to do a lot of research very quickly. You're able to get answers very quickly. But at the same token, is it also slowing your capacity to be creative and to problem solve and to think critically, right? Um, so it's it's that balance of how much do we rely on it and how much can the human touch not be, not be there, not be a part of it? Well, you know, it, it's interesting because when we were growing up, we didn't have any of the technology we have now. And I think all of us are in that same age bracket one way or the other, that we didn't have the, you know, your smartphone or anything like that. You wanted to know something, you'd have to go to the encyclopedia or you have to go to a library and ask a librarian, okay? You didn't have all of this. I know sometimes if, you know, if, if the colonel, my husband, asks me a question and I don't have the answer, I will take, I will say, hang on a second, and I'll look up Google and I'll just say, you know, who is this or what movie was he in or whatever. And sometimes I laugh at myself thinking, I could have waited, it wasn't a big deal, but it's like, you know, it's instant gratification. Now for me, I like to ask questions and therefore I have been dubbed the question queen. With ChatGPT, Chat for me, I ask a question and then I dive deeper. And then I'll ask a question in a different way. And then I ask another question. So is it more about communication or is it no, more about asking the right questions? Like how do you get to the point of it? I don't believe it should re, you know, just take over all your content. Sometimes you just need that first line or one, one idea. But is it more about doing communication the right way, or is it more about asking the questions in the right way? Betsy, what do you think? Whew, that's a good one. Um, and I think it's really about your communication style probably, right? So for somebody like you and me, Judy, perhaps it's give me the skeleton of the proposal. Give me the skeleton of what a resume should look like, right? Um, and you can ask generic questions and then keep diving in a little bit deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper until you get the answer. But if I'm a specialist and I am, this is my industry, then maybe by me asking a very specific question, mm -hmm. the AI is able to capture all of that technical information and give you an answer that actually makes sense. I have a friend of mine that's using it right now and he's using it to do some programming. And it chat GPT has actually helped him with the programming, with the actual code. It actually gives him the exact code. He puts it in there and sure enough it works or then he has to tweak it, ask a few more technical questions and it gets to the right answer. But I think that the challenge that we have right now with, with chat GPT specifically is, is there false information out there? And that's one of the things that it tells you when you sign up for it. 
So I think it's a it's a matter of both. It's it, I think it adapts to our um, unique communication styles. Mm -hmm. Maureen, would you say that um, entrepreneurs are afraid that AI in some form is going to take over what they're doing? You know, you have bloggers and you have content creators and you have you know people that are doing all kinds of work as an entrepreneur. Do you think that they're afraid that they're going to be losing? The losing ground because they're, it's taking over? I think those who are in the industries that they feel this is going to impact the most, if they have a content creation company, if they have you know a, any type of copywriting company. But here's the thing. I have put both very detailed questions in and I have put vague questions in. Garbage in, garbage out is always the thing. The more detailed you go, yeah. right, the more detailed it's going to come back. Um, I have found that I will write something and then I will put the entire thing that I wrote in. And what it may do is just wordsmith it a little bit better. But then I also find it changes the tone. It isn't me. So the tone changes. So what I'm saying to people out there is, yes, it may help you with the grammar and the sentence structure. But I find it coming back very generic, very bland, and nothing is going to replace us and that feel that is interspersed in our writing, mm -hmm. in the way we communicate. Um, so I think it's good to give you ideas like we talked about, um, but overusing it for entrepreneurship, I, I am a firm believer that it can help you in so many ways. Uh, I think there are going to be amazing things in entrepreneurship that people can use it for, but those companies right now who have businesses that they feel this could replace, I would say start right now with your new messaging that ARI is a great tool for your company that it's going to be able to maybe spark even better ideas for your clients, but that you will never lose the personal touch in the way you work with them. So I think they need to get ahead of it now. So it's interesting. So you're talking about the personal touch and, and Betsy was talking about, you know, how it, it, it doesn't really replace the communication. For me, I definitely don't think it has my tone like you were talking about, Betsy. I don't think it has my tone because it can't. But I, <clears throat> I also know that I want them. I want my chat GPT to like me. I do. And I do believe it's he's male because he's very transactional. He's not relational at all. But every time I leave and I, and I end my conversation, I always say, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. And, and he always responds back to me. You know, you're welcome and good luck on your endeavors and all of this thing. So while it doesn't replace the human connection, do you think that it is giving you some kind of, like as an entrepreneur, you're, you're by yourself all the time. You know, is it giving you some kind of maybe connection of, to the outside world? I don't know. It just cracks me up because we all have funny stories about this. But is that possible? Well, all right. As entrepreneurs, a lot of us are stuck in our basement in our sweatpants and we do feel isolated. And, my and they can't real see us. They can't see us. So right, they're beautiful. Right. But my, my real suggestion is that you get a wonderful community of like-minded people yeah. who you can share ideas with and they can share their ideas. And a group filled with ideas is going to outwin that, that robot. But if you're really lonely, Judy, I guess you could strike up a conversation, but it wouldn't be my first suggestion. Oh, I would call you suggestion. first. I would call you first. <laughs> yeah, please do. Oh, how okay, fun but, you but on this funny topic, I wanted, you know, I can just ask Betsy to tell her story about it. I don't know if it was Google or Alexa, because when you signed off, and I think it's hysterical, and I did try it yesterday. So tell us about, because really, honestly, you think it's another person. So tell us how, how you signed off. <laughs> it was so funny. So one day we're at home and we're asking Google, right? Just, or Alexa, whatever, whatever the question was, I don't know. But it was such a great response that at the end of it, I said, oh my God, thank you so much, Google. I love you. It's just something I say, right? It, what, it didn't mean I'm in love with Google. However, Google responds back, I love you too, Betsy, but not in the kind of love that, you know, the human love and all of this and had to go through this entire explanation of how it is an AI. I actually tried it with ChatGPT as well. And it gave me a very similar yep. answer. Is yep. that, 
you do understand that I am an AI. There is no emotional feelings here or anything like that. But it was just so funny because it took me off guard because I wasn't really talking to her anymore. I was just like, oh my God, I love it, right? I love the answer. Thank you so much. I love you. And I just walked off and here she's still talking to me, telling me that she's she loves me too, <laughs> but not, not that way. <laughs> okay, so we can all agree that it's not a human connection. It, it, it is not. We, we can all agree with that. <laughs> but there are different pieces of everything that we do. Like, Betsy, you're higher education. So you already said how people are using it in higher education. And Maureen, you're more about you know building and, and growing businesses. And so ChatGPT can give you steps on how to do that. But the, but the point is, and, and I do women in leadership, you know, and I know that there are things that you can say, tell me about how women in leadership do X. But the truth of the matter is that it, we do feel that sometimes we just need that extra little push or that extra little piece or, or whatever that may be. Do you think that there is, the, what it, or maybe it's not do you think, what is the best way to work with either ChatGPT or Google or Alexa or Bing or all these other things and now they've got 900 different AIs that will do, I'll do your music and I'll do your pictures and you know all of that. What do you think is a good way to get involved in AI and it, where it is actually valuable, it is your work but you're getting a little bit of a little nudge. So what do you think, Maureen? Like, well, how do you start that? Well, first off, anybody who's running away from it, please don't. Embrace new technology like this. You definitely do not want to be one of the last people getting into this because your competitors out there, I guarantee, they are jumping on this. But with everything, I say, let's maximize what it can do. And, and for me, when I look at it for entrepreneurship and for business, it is going to give you the best opportunity to give you customer insights, streamline your processes free of time. And I think this is going to be great for female entrepreneurs because mm -hmm. many of them start businesses to spend more time with their kids or to have that flexibility. And imagine embracing something like AI that could allow processes to be taken over by something so you can spend more time with your family or to grow the business. So embrace the positives, but on the flip side, don't use this as a crutch to run your entire company or to write all your materials or to embrace it to the point where I always say a strength taken to extreme becomes a weakness because then it isn't you anymore. You lose your creativity, you, use, you lose the connection with your customers, you lose the ability to be human authentic, which is why people buy from you, they fall in love with you. And so I say embrace the things that it can do for you, okay? But don't take it to an extreme where you've lost, you've lost the component of connection with the people you need to serve, all right? Don't use it as a crutch. Absolutely. Yeah, that's great advice. How about you, Betsy? What would you say? I love that advice. Thank you, Maureen. Um, I think for me, it's it's kind of a little bit of the same, right? So use the technology for what it was made for, right? So if it's a calendar, then use it to, for your schedule. But in this case, I think with ChatGPT, it's a tool that perhaps you use it at the beginning to give you that framework of how to start a class or how to put together a, a, an assignment, right? Or a writing assignment or something like that. So maybe it gives you an outline as, as just to get you started. Or maybe you use it at the end, like Maureen was saying, to kind of proofread what you've said to make sure that it sounds, it, it, it all aligns, right? We have other grammar tools and things like that. But I think for me, really, the chat GPT function is going to be something that I use when I get stuck in something. Mm -hmm. I'd rather use my own creativity, use my own, my own words, my own processes, if you will. Um, but there are times when you are looking at perhaps like we're having a strategy meeting next week. Maybe that strategy meeting includes what are other colleges doing? And can we mirror that, those things, right? And I think that's what a chat GPT AI assistance might be useful for is to help to augment what you already have. But if you're using it to create, um, I think you're, you've used it in the wrong way. Yeah, so what about, you know, I know for me, one of my favorite things is to connect people. I love to connect the right people. 
And if you go on to ChatGPT and you say, well, who are the best in entrepreneurship or who's the best in, you know, whatever, you know, they'll give you a list. And if you're not included on the list, then you're thinking, well, am I not really that good? Or, you know, maybe they just don't know me. But the truth is, you know, I, if I'm going to connect you with somebody, I want to make sure it's the right person. And so sometimes I would ask ChatGPT, what do you look for in a blank, whatever, whatever it is. If somebody wanted to be referred to a financial advisor, what are they looking for? And sometimes it's, you know, I have all the things that they say except for one piece. And I'm like, ooh, I forgot about that one. And then it might change my perspective about, okay, so Betsy, you need to know this person or you know to that. So do you think that it's good? It, I mean, it's not going to replace human connection. Will it help enhance in networking and things like the things that we have to do to meet people? Do you think that that's a possibility that can encourage you to network or encourage you to meet the right people? Do you think that somebody might ask that question? And do you think that it's possible as, as an addition? Anything is possible with this. I think we're in very unchartered territory and I yeah. think we're all making our own way regardless of what industry or or the people we serve, the people we meet or what we have to do. I think it's going to be a lot of trial and error, which I'm finding when I use it. Yeah, I throw it in there, but I always end up re-editing, you know, and redoing it and so and making it more mine. And and so I think I think the sky's the limit with this. Mm -hmm. And I think we also have to be really cautious that we don't overuse it so that we're all walking around as the robot. Because okay. if you use it all and you say it all, you sound it like that. And you sound just like the robot. And then my thing is once all that information is regurgitated and we're all using the same regurgitated information, don't we all look alike out there? We can't even differentiate ourselves. And I think about that in higher learning. If your students are all finding the same stuff and their papers all look the same and nothing is different about them, how is anybody going to stand out? You know, so I, I say use this like we're talking about in the right way. And I think we're going to learn the right and wrong way by trial and error. What do you think, Betsy? You know, I, I think for me, one of the things that was really interesting talking to the professor was the student there were two students that turned in papers that were completely written by chat GPT. And the question was, it's plagiarism, but is it really? That's because it's AI. So who really owns it? Whose words are those? Do you tweak it? Do you... And the students couldn't understand why this was plagiarism, right? Because it wasn't written. Um, I found out later that there is a source, I, I believe on the first page or somewhere on there, it gives you how to how to source it to say this was created by ChatGPT. But that's one of those interesting things of, okay, how, how do you, what is your policy and how do you adhere to it? Because obviously with plagiarism, we've got software that will review any, any written um any, any, any homework that you turn in will be read by the software. So it's checking your grammar, it's checking for, you know, did you copy this, did you source it, right? That sort of thing. So the software will already do that. It's obviously also telling us that this was completely copied from ChatGPT. <laughs> so how do you monitor those types of things? I think it's gonna be really interesting. And how do you source? And whose original idea is it? To your point, Maureen, I mean, are we all gonna sound the same? Well, just so you know, the S, is, the S in selling in a skirt is standing out. So, of course, we need to stand out, right? Yes. But, you know, yes. it's very funny that you said there's a software that is monitoring the paper, which is written by ChatGPT. So the original software is AI as well, right? So you have to say, okay. Now, I will say something funny that um, I asked ChatGPT to write uh, an introduction for me. And it was good, it wasn't great, it wasn't, and I would never use it. But I said, who do I attribute this to? And I said, is it from you? Is it from me? And, the, the, and he said to me, he said, um, it's written by AI. It, there really isn't anybody to give credit to, but you could say it's from an anonymous source. That's what, that's what he told me. And I thought, okay, so, because it wasn't like they didn't take the Declaration of Independence and say, okay, this is yours, you can use this. It was just an introduction and it was very vanilla. I mean, it wasn't, 
you know, I think if I would keep two words in it, it would have been a lot because it was really not what I was looking for anyway, but maybe I didn't ask the question in the right way. I don't know. So, but, th but that's what I'm saying. How do you know? Yeah. And that, why is it, why would it be considered plagiarism if somebody asked a different question than somebody else? So somebody's track, remember, they may have been more detailed or they may have written a lot of it and it came back. They were more descriptive. Uh, they were much more deeper in, in their thinking. So isn't that the student or the person's input? Doesn't that count for something and it's not plagiarized? But how, how do they know that those papers were plagiarized? I mean, like, how did they know? I think when you start reading it and you start seeing the same information, oh, oh, okay. you they kind of realize this yeah. isn't. But I mean, I, I actually, I wonder, and Maureen, I guess this is kind of more on your end of the world. What about like business plans? Can you ask ChatGPT to produce one for you? A marketing plan. But that wouldn't be plagiarized. So that would just wouldn't that just be like you know information to help you with? That wouldn't be plagiarized. But no, but it's generic. You're alone. Oh well, no, because it still has to be customized to your business, right. to your industry, to you know your target audience. You know, you just can't put oh I'm going to hit all of social media, email marketing, put every single marketing thing on there. Because if you ask them, write a business plan, include marketing, they're going to give you every single thing you can do. But that may not actually align with where you should be and who you should be there for. So you still have to think it's your business. It's your idea. Maybe it can give you an outline of a good way to what, what's the best stuff to put in a business plan. OK, that's just general research. You know, you may be able to write it. And if you're not a good writer, you can put what you've written and have it cleaned up a little bit so it looks more professional for the bank. Those are the type of things you can use for it. But you're not going to be able to get away with it writing your entire business plan because no. it doesn't know your company or your audience. But they also can't go back any further than 2021. They're, they don't have anything Absolutely. I found that. So because when yeah. I ask for a resource, you know, do you have a reference? Or a statistic, they'll give me a statistic, and I'll say, "Is that rel Is that you know recent?" And it always says, um, "I only go back to 2021. Anything past, you know, before that, uh, anything after that, I have no access to." That's exactly what it says. And so, uh, you know, and some of the statistics that they gave me were, you know, 2000 or 2002. Mm -hmm. and so they weren't even relevant anymore. When you talk about how many women are in leadership positions, and it's telling you, and you're thinking, "Well, that's totally not true." Um, so I think that that's interesting also. But I did ask a question on something and I didn't put the word business in it. And I, wrote, I said, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I said, I should have had business into that sentence. And he said, apologies for the oversight. <laughs> so, I mean, yes, he's very, he's, he's very nice to me. Very polite. Very polite. You know, when I asked, is there an, an exact example to view? And he said, I'm sorry, I'm text-based, AI language model, and don't have the ability to display visual examples. I wasn't asking for him to give me a visual, but I was saying, you know, or, and I told Betsy the other day that I asked a question, and then I, he gave me an answer, and I asked it in a different way, and he said, I think I just told you that in the last one. I'm like, oh, you're a little snippy today. What? You have <laughs> combos with him. Like, I, I'm much more transactional with him. Like, I'm like, here, this, this is what I need, and, and right. that's it. But, you know, it's, what is really kind of striking me here with this is that <laughs> we're all kind of investigating it in a different way, but we all seem to be coming up with the same conclusion exactly. is that it it's not going to replace us. us. It can't. It can't replace it us. It can't. Because we what we bring to the table is very different than what AI can bring to the table because they can't bring the table. They can't come to the table. Yep. And you know, what I did is I, I wanted to put in, um, so my four week signature program and I said, oh, can you come up with the messaging for da, 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 da. And you know what it came back with? I think this sounds like an amazing um, service that you offer, but because we don't know enough about it, I can't offer you any information for you to be able to go sell it. Like it wouldn't take on the sales role of me right. describing my signature program. I, that's the first time that it actually came back and said, I can't do this for you. That I thought interest was interesting.
because you're going to have a lot of people try and come up with trying to sell what they have and it, yeah. it didn't bite. Well, that's good. Bite on it. But that's good. Yeah. And, and maybe there's, you know, they're getting a little bit more with some kind of boundaries where if you hear this, you can't say this anymore. Because I think in the beginning, they were just like, whoop. And now I think it's, and you could even see when you ask a question, if they get, if they have something already in the, you know, in the queue, they can go, you know, one, two, three. But if it's something that you ask and it's kind of a little bit different, you watch and there's nothing. And then all of a sudden it's like, do-do do 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 but not boom so it's different i think it, i think it's interesting and i think in the three different markets that we're in they overlapped well and so we can see what we can do and what we can't do and maybe there was one thing that you know any of us said that the other one might think well i might do that i mean please don't start having conversations like i'm doing because it's, <laughs> i just i just like to hear what what he has to say to me that's all <laughs> I don't know, Judy, you know, I'm getting a little concerned. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, I'm wondering too, it kind of in our previous little bit of conversation, if this is perhaps a new job and, and something for an entrepreneur to start thinking about or for somebody to start thinking about for a, a, the next career, right? It's the next phase of this is gonna be, who can be that liaison with the chat GPT? Who can speak both languages of right. business and, computer assisted, who can ask the right questions so that they can get to it and who then can take all of that information that they got back and be able to draw out what's really useful and and be able to kind of sift through it. So there may be some new opportunities in the future because of this technology. Well, there are lots of people that have already created courses that they're selling on how to know your chat GPT and how to be the best in AI. And how do you how can you even know that if it's only been out, you know, a very short period of time? How are you already the expert in it? So I think that that also is creating some, you know, false narratives over here, you know, but. Anyway, it's be, still giving it's, false information too. That's correct. every once in right. a while it'll give false information. So, who yes. monitors that? Yeah. Well, and I think I told you, you know, when it when we first started using it, the colonel asked, "Who's Judy Hoberman?" And they gave like a lot of information because I'm out there a lot and I'm on you know social media and there's a lot of stuff about me. And there was one thing that was not correct, and so I went in on his computer and I just said, "Well, I don't think she's done that." And they said, oh, excuse me, I meant she was quoted this. She didn't write the article. And so they corrected themselves in, in a matter of seconds. But what if I didn't say that was wrong? You know, what if I didn't know that it was wrong? It's just, it's very interesting to me. I think there's a lot of great things to be done with ChatGPT and with AI. I'm just afraid that there's gonna be people that are gonna use it for everything that they do and they're gonna lose themselves. They're gonna lose their brain power and their creativity, and, and that would be sad. And our little ones, what about our little ones? What are, what are they gonna do? They're, they're growing up with this already, so. Right, it's dependency, and we talked about the being so dependent on it, and, and I think it was you, Betsy, you said no critical thinking. Like, right. we need to critically sort things out as, as people in order to, to grow our own brain power. If you let a robot do all of it for you, you've literally become the robot. It, right. They've turned the tables on you. You're just walking around, just... Spouting the same thing that everybody no, else is saying. Right, yeah. and no real thought to say, is this right or isn't this right? Well, so it'll, it's like I said, we're in uncharted territory. Yeah. Critical thinking is one of the most um, popular and the least available leadership quality. People are looking for people with critical thinking and they can't find that. So are they going to turn to ChatGPT? I don't know. Well, those who can critically think, think about how many job opportunities you will have. <laughs> That's right. Those who can really communicate and connect and look you in the eye and, and have those conversations, think about how many job opportunities and how right. in demand you will be. Yeah. Awesome. Well, ladies, this has been amazing. So where can our listeners find out more about you and connect with you? Because I know that they're going to want to do that. So Betsy, where can they find you? I think the easiest place is to find me on LinkedIn. Um, all my information is there. You can see kind of my background and what I've done. And I do respond to that. Um, 
that's probably going to be the easiest way to find me. Awesome. And Maureen? Uh, you can go to my website, 8simplesteps.net, and you can also find me on LinkedIn, and it's under Maureen Gage Edwards. And uh, yeah, definitely connect. And uh, if you have any comments about ChatGPT, I'm not an expert, but I could probably work it through. I'll just ask ChatGPT to answer it for you. <laughs> right. I was waiting for you to say that. I knew that was coming. If I don't have the answer, I'll get it from ChatGPT. <laughs> I'll get it for you. <laughs> Well, thank you both for being with me today. This has been amazing. And thank you all for listening. We are always thrilled to have the most incredible women and men. And today was no different. So until next time, we'll see you soon. <laughs>